Hey, hey, everyone. Uh, hope you had a happy free comic book day. I did not go out, all out this year. I mean, I could have gone to eight comic book stores or something insane like that it had I the energy. I did not have the energy. I just went to my regular shop, um, Cloud9 Comics, which is a tiny little place. Um, they did kind of a clever thing, but I missed it. My daughter didn't want to go. Earlier in the day, they had a balloon artist creating um, superhero balloon figures. And um, anyway, I guess they got, they got really mobbed and they got a lot of families and children. But there were still some, I, I guess I went around like 11.30 or something in the, in the morning. There were still some kids' comics left, so the, since my daughter wasn't there, I got stuff for her, but you could only get five free comics, so I got three, three ones aimed right at her, Monster High, and Barbie, and Superhero Girls. And so I think all of these are actually previews for graphic novels, not for upcoming comics. They aren't standalone comics, I don't think, although maybe I haven't looked. I know this one is the first chapter of the upcoming um, Summer Olympus graphic novel, which my daughter is looking forward to a lot. It comes out in July. She doesn't, after I got this, she said, oh, I don't want to read this because then I'll be dying for the next chapter. So she's going to wait till July to read the whole graphic novel. So I should have gotten one, of, one more that I would have wanted. But for myself, I got Kids Savage, which may be a kid's comics. I'm not sure. But it looks like it contains an entire issue's worth of comics, so I appreciate that. And the same with I Hate Image, and who can resist that? Uh, but hopefully not too many squeamish parents with kids accidentally picked it up, as it starts out very violent and probably continues that way. Um, God, I love these colors. Um, by Jean-Francois Bolot. So, always got to remember the name of that colorist. I think, I, I, he works on other comics, but I think he's, in particular, he's Scotty Young's colorist. So, but then more excitingly, the comics, the back issues were half off. Um, at which point, I look for the things that already have good prices and get them half off. Because a lot of the prices at this shop are a little bit on the high side for the... So, you really do want the half off prices. But... For the ones I got, I'm pretty happy. I got um, double dipping or maybe triple dipping on my favorite issue of Commandy or my favorite Commandy cover. Um, so there, it's eight dollars. So this cost me four dollars. It seemed seemed worth doing. And then there was an even cheaper issue. Uh, so this would have cost me three dollars um, of a Commandy cover that I like a lot. I know some people find Commandies for a dollar and stuff like that. I never do. So three and four dollars seems like a great price to me. My CLZ app said I was missing this one issue of Claw. I don't know if that's because I... I don't, I don't know if I've ended up rebuying it or not. So that cost me $3. Um, so I think now for sure I have the entire Claw run. So I'm going to be reading that from start to beginning. Originally I was reading kind of in the middle and it was really great. But it'll be fun to do that. And then I... I was too lazy to keep looking at my CLZ app. I don't think I have this issue of ARAC. So for $2, that seemed good. And this one. Um, and then I'm pretty sure I do have this one, so I don't know why I grabbed it. But um, So these are from later in the ARAC Son of Run Thunder run. I seem to have got every other issue here. 49, 47, and 45. Uh, what's the story with that? Did someone else grab all the even number issues? I don't know. Even more exciting, priced at $5, which means it cost me two fifty, dollars was this Marvel graphic novel of Conan. I think I've had opportunities to buy it before, but I have no idea who Don Carr is, the writer. I've never seen that name anywhere else but on this graphic novel. Um, there's no about, about the creators or anything in here. There isn't even a title page. Um... I guess that's what they thought a graphic novel should be like back then. But it is penciled and inked by John Severin, and I don't, to my knowledge, is the only Conan 
that is pencil and ink by John Severn. And I don't know if he inked much except a few pages of other Conan, but he did ink a good bit of Cull. And it is colored by his sister, Marie Severn. And it's just a beautiful package. So I don't know if the writing will be any good, but uh, I can't believe I got this for $2.50. Um, so super thrilled by that. I guess, you know, if I had realized how great the art was inside, I think I would have picked it up a long time ago. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, kind of harkens back to Hal Foster and uh, Prince Valiant in a way. So that's, that's kind of a special volume. I think one reason why I might have bypassed it is I'm not so in love with the cover. It's okay, but it doesn't, it doesn't give you that great John Severin, um, feel the way the interior art does. Let's see. Got some other Conan stuff. What I really want is Conan Saga number one. Couldn't find it. They had 14 there. I thought, what the heck, I'll grab it. Two bucks. See, see how it looks. Um, on the inside is something that must be from a, um, some Savage Sword issue. I haven't figured out which yet. But not, this is the cover of Savage Tales. Um, so I thought there might be some Savage Tales reprinted in here. Anyway, still a good one to have. Um, especially at such a nice price. And then one I have bypassed for years. But again, I thought, well, if I'm going to pay $2.50 and I'm so into collecting the oversized Conan, let's take a look at this. This is the adaptation of the first Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger movie. I still, I have a lot of problems with Arnold as Conan. Um, just because I had read so much Conan by the time that movie came out. I just had too many other pictures in my head than, than Arnold. And, uh, but inside this is drawn as the typical um, John Buscema Conan. No attempt to do Arnold whatsoever or make it look like the movie as far as I can tell. So, um, an early attempt at, uh, at uh, coloring that's more than 64 colors, I think. So it has kind of a watercolory look. I'm not sure if that is the best, but it was interesting when they occasionally had the opportunity to do something more with the coloring, what they would try to do. I mean, this is obviously still long before digital computerized coloring was available. Because this would have been late 70s or 1980. Let's see. 1982. Oh, okay. My memory of when the Conan movie came out is a little wrong. Yeah, so it's worth having as someone who likes to have the, um, the John Buscema oversized Conan stuff. But not, not one of the most exciting Conan volumes. And as you may remember from other videos, I'm collecting Epic, and I'm getting very close to having the full Epic run, so I grabbed some more issues that I didn't already have. I think that's a Brother Hill, Brothers Hildebrandt cover. That's my guess from looking at it. Yeah, it says Hildebrandt right on it. Those guys were really popular in the 80s. Um, I never quite got why, but I guess they were, people loved their Lord of the Rings covers. There's an interesting uh, Neil Adams painting. The whole painting side of Neil Adams' career, I think, should get some more attention. Um, I wonder what his paintings are like now, given the way his, what his drawings are like now. But I feel like he still has drawing chops, but not continuity chops so well. Um, anyway, here's a Boris Vallejo cover, or however you would properly pronounce Boris's last name. Um, it's an interesting one. <laughs> Less focus on bodybuilding type of characters there. So that was really cool to get those. So those each cost me $3. At my, the cheaper store, I got a lot of epics for $3. So this half price $3. But they're ones I didn't already have. And $3 is an amazing price in my mind for epic. I hardly ever see Monsters Unleashed when I look through, look in the wild through the bins. Um, so I just grabbed this Monsters Unleashed for no particular reason, except I don't, I only, I don't think, do I have maybe one Monsters Unleashed? 
Um, so anyway, I'm not even sure. Some of this may be reprint material in here. Possibly that's why it was so cheap. Um, Pop, Steve Gerber and Pablo Marcos, that's interesting. Pablo Marcos probably was best suited for black and white. It was always odd when he was doing color superhero things. What have we got here? Tony Isabella and Dave Cockrum. Inspired by the novel of Edwin L. Arnold, Gulliver Jones, Warrior of Mars. Excuse my burping. Okay, and then, um, now I'm skipping back in time to Wednesday. Before Free Comic Book Day, I looked through the $1 bins at my shop, but because I'm a pull list person, I get, I get stuff from the $1 bin at 50% off. And it turns out if you get 12 comics, you get them for $10, so I got them for $5. So basically, here's a bunch of scraggly comics I got for $0.40 cents a piece. I got um, Teen Titan Spotlight starring Starfire in hopes that my daughter might like it, although she is put off by the costume. <laughs> um, but inside, it's interesting because the art is by Colleen Doran. And, um, and the script is by Barbara Randall, um, who I think maybe later become Barbara Kiesel. I'm not sure. But so it's an all-women issue in terms of creators. Um, and it looks pretty good. I mean, it's not, it's not like the George Perez cover, but there you go. So even if... I, I'm looking forward to reading this with or without my daughter. Um, and then this very beat-up uh, 20-cent Wonder Woman. Kind of a cool cover. Inside, art by Don Heck and Vince Coletta. And I think Don Heck was at, at his best in terms of superheroes when on his Wonder Woman run. So I'd like to look for more of that. The writing back in those days on the Wonder Woman comics, unfortunately, was not very good. I think this is by Carrie Bates, only it says Gary Bates, uh, who was kind of a regular Superman DC writer. <laughs> Never thought much of him. And then I got a, um, a small fistful of Grimjack. And I guess Grimjack went on for a long time, close to 100 issues maybe. And it's only the early issues that, um, that have art by Timothy Truman, whose art is different than I remember. Maybe it evolved several times, so I'm remembering from a different period. But still... These, um, the issues that, of Grimjack that are drawn by him have a lot, a certain energy and grim power to them. Um, so I got number 11, and they also, the, the ones with the covers by Timothy Truman, the, his covers are way better than the others. Um, so there's another Timothy Truman issue, number 12, with an awesome cover. But then I, I just grabbed a few other random ones. They have a, a lot of them in the 50 cent bins, um. So there's number 29, with a, not a bad cover, but not as good as the Timothy Truman era cover. That's by Sean McManus, um, who's not a bad artist. Um, and then this cover is way less good. I don't remember why I picked this particular issue. Um, number 30. I don't even know. If, well, that art's not bad. But, yeah, I don't see it. Oh, wait. The artist is Doug Rice, someone I never heard of. So it's, I think it goes downhill as the issue progresses. Anyway, still written by John Ostrander. And then I picked up this issue because it had a character from Nexus on the cover. The Hammer of God, I think his name is. Judah, Judah something, the Hammer of God. And apparently there was some big crossover at First Comics that included Nexus. I had no idea. Crossroads tie-in. Oh, and on the back cover they're advertising a Crossroads with Nexus. So who knows? I'm going to look into that. Um, and then I've, there's this DC miniseries that I never heard of called Conquer, Conqueror of the Barren Earth. Just four issues. So I thought I'd try that out. Um, hopefully I can find the first two issues too. Before graphic novels, when they had an urge to do something a little different, they do a miniseries. 
Um, it's got Rod and Randall Art, who's sometime an artist I like quite a bit. Maybe he was married to Barbara Randall. Hmm. Uh, just a random issue of Marvel Guru. Again, these are all you know from that bargain bin that cost me forty cents a piece. And an issue of Warlord that that reprints Warlord number one. Um, and I don't think I own Warlord number one in its original form. I feel like I have another reprint of it. But what caught my eye is in the back. There's a backup feature drawn by Tom Yates, and I. Tom Yates is an a unsung, really cool, especially for fantasy artist. Um, I, he must have worked slow and didn't produce a lot. It is um, written by Paul Levitz. So, is that, yeah, Paul Levitz, Dragon Sword. So uh, that's really what made me pick up this one. And then I think I have a issue number one of Night Force, but I'm not 100% sure that I still own it. So for 40 cents, it seemed worth grabbing an extra copy. It's a little beat up at the bottom. So that was, that was fun. Um, if you're not searching for, if you're not a key issue collector, which I am not at all, I, that does not appeal to me. I am a reader, a, a collector of interesting art, um, a collector of obscurities, and just things that, you know, push my buttons. Um, if you're not a key issue collector, if you look, comics are so cheap. This, I don't know if this, there was a period like when, uh, CDs took over and vinyl went out of style when you could buy used, really good used records for about 50 cents a piece. And now they're again, like 11 or $12. <laughs> and when I go to a lot of used record stores now, um, but I don't know if comics are going through that period or they'll remain permanently just cheap as dirt. Um, but for, for someone like me, that's great. So I'm just grabbing a lot, way more than I can read. Um, on the graphic novel side, I picked up Savage Highway. I, um, I got it for my, with my 25% discount and it was, um, so I got it from my store. It was a, it's only $25 for this really nice large size hardback. Um, it's a post-apocalyptic story. Apparently, even though it's a, it's a French comic based on a, I'm told by, by the Frog Queen, based on a, a novelist from the 70s. Um, and I would, you know, I like the colors and I like the idea, I like the post-apocalyptic, um, thing. The title, Savage Highways, is really cool. Um. I don't think this art blows me away. You know, it's it's good, but um, yeah. But I just thumbed through it. I haven't read it yet. But you know what? The colors are really really cool. I am enjoying thumbing through it. And so many people have raved to me about Black Monday Murders that I felt like I should get on it and read it. Um, so this is the paperback. Originally, I was telling myself I would just wait for the double-sized hardback, but got too impatient. But I was frustrated, so a reason why you might want to get things in floppies is this has gutter loss, and on the very first page, which is all I've read so far, the gutter loss cuts off some letters that are in the, um, in the uh, captions. So... It reads the New York Talk Exchange because you can't see the S unless you pull that binding apart. Um, and it's in the month of October. <laughs> so I don't know how much that will bother me as I read through, but it's pretty tight to the margins, um, the interior margins, which is unfortunate. Uh, but I think as I get pickier, it's, it's hard to be a... Um, paperback trade reader. I like, I like to get the hardbacks or the floppies and the floppies are really the best way to appreciate the art. There was a new issue of this quarterly free sort of undergroundish magazine that, um, includes a page every, every quarter by a guy who works at my comic shop. I won't be able to find Scott. I won't be able to find his just by leaping through here. It looks pretty, it looks like a pretty good issue. Um, 
with each artist just getting one page, it's not, you know, the most satisfying read in the world, but it's kind of, it's fun and it's free. Um, I think it's supposed to be a showcase for the artists. Hopefully it does lead to other things. Well, I got in the mail back issue number 96. This is amazing to me because it's an entire issue focused on an obscure, well, semi-obscure um, anthology comic that Marvel put out in the early 80s called Marvel Fanfare. Fair. And it was an anthology of mostly their their own collect, uh, creators with often unusual pairings of artists with, with theme and stuff like that. But, um, but the thing is, all of this Marvel fanfare is in those bargain base, those bargain bins, um, and yet a whole magazine is devoted to them. So there's a weird, you know, how many other people are like me and are have obsessively collected Marvel fanfare from Fifty Cent bins, enough to sell this issue of back back issue magazine? I guess I don't know. It's a kooky kooky uh, world, kooky hobby that we're part of here. Um, but I love it. To me, this is just awesome that this obscure little uh, obsession of mine has a whole issue of a magazine devoted to it. Also in hardback, haven't taken the wrapper off yet, um, DK3, Dark Knight 3, The Master Race. I'm collecting the hardbacks. This is number 8, so I think there's just one more to go. I haven't read 7, so maybe I'll read 7, 8, and 9 together. I've actually been enjoying reading this a lot in hardback. Um, maybe I'd have a different response to it in the regular comic book format. But, um, yeah, it's just been fun. And I picked up, or I got from In Stock Trades, The Rook. Uh, there must be more than what's in this volume, but reprinting uh, the old Rook stories from Warren. I really loved the um, the newer two graphic novels that came out of the of the Rook from Dark Horse, uh, with art by Paul Galassi. So, um, and actually, I am collecting issues of the Rook too, uh, but I was impatient. I wanted to just have them all in a hardback format too. So, kind of double dipping on the Rook in two different ways. But I don't even know if <laughs> if the old Rook stories are that good or not. Okay, and here I'm going to have to lean back. This is, um, here's a regular graphic novel compared to it. This is a Will Eisner kind of art book. It was part of some French, it's like the catalog for some French um, art show about Will Eisner celebrating his career. The Centennial Celebration, I guess he was born in 1917, 2017. So it, it contains a lot of... Um, reproductions of original art and other bits and pieces from throughout his career. And it's from, it's printed by IDW and Kitchen, no, sorry, Dark Horse and Kitchen Sink together. Um, but it's uh, on the same quality of um, those artist editions, you know, in terms of the great paper and the great binding. Um, you know, so it just feels so nice. Obviously, for hardcore Will Eisner fans only, um, maybe see if your library can get it. But um, definitely a very welcome addition to my collection. And last but not least, I was watching a um, a Constant Bronstar video, and he talked about this trade. This hardback, I mean, and I just went straight to Amazon. I had some credit on Amazon for my credit card, so I got this basically for free, or, you know, because of other stuff of money I'd spent. Tom Sutton's uh, Creepy Things, which is published by IDW and Do Yo. The only misgiving about Yo publications is I think they basically just publish things that are out of copyright. So, um, is Tom Sutton still alive? I just feel when you're writing on the name of the artist, even if the material is out of copyright, you as the publisher ought to be 
uh, paying the artist rent on his name, so to speak, on his fame. People are buying this because it's a Tom Sutton book. Um, anyway, and I don't really know the full situation there. But, um, but this is a thrill to get. I was mostly familiar with Tom Sutton from his Marvel work. Um, but he's done a lot of cool horror stories. I think these are mostly from Charlton. And I would love to collect the originals, but I hardly ever see them anywhere. So um, when you do, they're cheap. But it's nice to have this uh, hardback edition. So, yeah, and <laughs> I don't show all the stuff I... Uh, all the back issues I get and all the hardbacks I get. So that's kind of a sampling of the kind of stuff I'm picking up here and there. Like I say, everything's so cheap. I mean, even hardcover books... You know, I'm usually getting them for 42% off, sometimes for more, 50% off. Um, so it's just kind of a, it's just too easy to get more and more comics. I'm probably a broken record on that fact. Um, but go out there and enjoy comics. Talk to y'all later.